Well, greetings and salutations, test takers. This is the Series 7 Guru coming to you from my off-grid studio from an undisclosed location with another explication request. If you have an explication request, send it to explication request at guruexamprep.com. A bond has a 7% coupon and an offering price of 108. The bond matures in 10 years. An investor purchasing this bond at the offering price would have a yield of maturity closest to. Uh, I'm glad somebody sent this in. This happens quite a bit. Uh, I will tell test takers, you don't have to calculate yield to maturity or yield to call on their exam. And then they'll send me a question like this about yield to maturity or yield to call and say, you told me I wasn't going to see it. And here's a practice question. I said, well, hold on. Are they really asking you to crunch yield to maturity or yield to call? In almost every circumstance, the answer is no. What they're testing you on is the relationship of the yields. You know, and if you can do current yield, you'll be in pretty good shape in terms of this relationship. Now, uh, I recommend the teeter-totter or seesaw. And so what we do here is make a flat line which represents a bond at par. At a bond at par, all of the yields are the same. And then here it tells me the bond is trading at a premium. So there's our nominal yield. That's the fulcrum of the teeter-totter or seesaw. And so interest rates have gone down since the bond was issued, and that's why this bond is now trading at a premium. Okay, so I know that the yield of maturity basis, that's the fancy word for yield of maturity, has to be something less than seven. So I can eliminate from the answer set anything that isn't less than seven, right? Current yield is going to be there. Yield of maturity is there. Yield to call. It's very testable to know that when you purchase a bond at a premium, the yield to call is the lowest yield and the most likely yield, yield to worse because interest rates have gone down. And it's very likely this issuer would like to replace this higher cost debt at seven with lower cost debt at, you know, maybe six or whatever the case may be. All right. So we know we're looking for an answer less than uh, seven. You know, maybe there's only one answer less than seven. I say, thank you very much. But if I do the current yield, that would also help me orient myself. So here I say, okay, well, I can should be able to do current yield what an investment pays me by what it costs me. And when I do the current yield here, I get 6.48. So now I know yield of maturity has to be something less than seven, and it has to be lo less than 6.48. All right, well, then now let's look at our answer sets and see if we can answer the question. A yield of maturity approximate. Okay, well, choice A says 5.96, which ends up being the correct answer by process of elimination, because it can't be 7.22, right? Because that's higher than the nominal yield. That would be a bonded discount. It can't be 7.5, and it can't be 7.80. So we, uh, by process of elimination, can figure out exactly uh, where this is in relationship to that. Uh, this is a, a Kaplan question. If you don't have a Kaplan QBank, I highly recommend it as a paid supplement. Uh, with my 15% discount code at checkout, you can get a Kaplan QBank for $55.80, uh, which I think is a great investment. And for that commercial, Kaplan allows me to give you a free look on Kaplan content like this. A bond has a 7% coupon, offering price of 108. The bond matures in 10 years. An investor purchasing this bond at the offering price would have a yield to maturity closest to. We used our teeter-totter or seesaw to figure out what this looks like in terms of that, right? We know that it's got to be something less than that. So boom. All right, let me get rid of that. Uh, remember, inch by inch, your Series 7 is its inch. Yard by yard, your Series 7 is hard. And I'll see you for the next explication request.